Happy Sabbath, church. Please listen to the following announcements. Bible class this afternoon at 5 p.m. Please make an effort to come out. Our AY program will be at 6 o'clock, and this is a special program. Please bring your actual physical Bible. We'll be, we will be doing swords in hand. So let's come out for this Bible competition. Vespers will be at 7.15 sunset today 7:33 or nurse on duty today is sister peart please remember to support our weekly wednesday night prayer meetings wednesday evenings at 7:30 p.m. tonight we will have our couples meeting at 8 p.m. at the peart's residence all couples are invited Please remember our upcoming concert. It, it's called um, Seven Pieces of the Master, and I do have tickets. If anyone still need tickets, please see Sister Peart. If you purchase the $40 tickets, $10 will go towards the Pathfinder Club. The concert will be next, next Saturday evening at 7 p.m. Coming soon, the Adventist Book Center Express Delivery. You need to pre-order. It's for pickups only. The mobile has been retired. It will be on Sunday, the fourth of sorry, the seventh of April, right here at our Margate Church, from 1:30 p.m. to 2 p.m. There are many ways to order. You can call, you can fax, or you can email. The information is on the screen. Use your phone and take a screenshot. Our health nugget for today, the benefits of tomatoes. Tomatoes helps you to double up on your sun protection. It preserves your eye health. Antioxidants in tomatoes are good for your heart. And tomatoes helps you maintain a healthy weight. Our thought for today we must be global Christians with a global vision because God is a global God. Thank you and have a blessed Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. Please stand with us as we begin our divine hour. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known the church is now called to worship and we're singing yes the world yes the world we're bound down and say you are god every man
All right, let's do that again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Isn't God good? And worthy to be praised. We are here this morning to celebrate the liberation from sin. Amen? And that's a lot to be grateful for. Uh, we know this morning we have a full house, and so I am certain we have a number of guests with us this morning. And we just want you to know that you're at the right place. Amen? There's no place like this place anywhere near this place because this is the place. Welcome to Margate. We want to welcome those who are joining us online. Uh, we're so happy for your listenership, your partnership, and we know that one day very soon you will join us in the sanctuary. Um, just want to ask those who are visiting with us for the first time um, to just indicate by just raising your hand. If you're on my right, just raise your hand. Oh, praise God, praise God. Can you tell us where you're visiting from? You're visiting from Jamaica. Oh, my friend. Jamaica is a big little island. All right. Um, where in Jamaica are you from? Oh, you're from Portmore. All right. Happy to have you with us this morning. Anyone else um, on this side? Oh, welcome. Happy to have you from New York. Um, there's another hand over here. All right. So um, let me go to my left. Visiting here at Margate for the first time, we just want to recognize you. Just raise your hand. Oh, yes, of course. Habel. Habel, you didn't tell me where you're worshiping from. Where are you you're coming from? Okay, all right. Happy to have you, Abel, from Haiti. And, you know, we, we talk about Ukraine and what's happening over there. Lots happening in Haiti, amen? And we want to pray for Haiti so that God will restore order in that country. People are suffering there. Anyone else on my left? All right, let's go in the middle. Yes, I see some new faces in the middle. All right, all right. Just tell me where you're worshiping from, where you're coming from. Oh, my goodness, you bold me there. All right, so you're, you're which country? All right. She's visiting from Haiti. All right. And we're happy to have you. Oh, from Pennsylvania. All right. All right. Poor me. All right. My sister, you're visiting from Mandeville, Jamaica. Cool, cool Mandeville. We're happy to have you here at Margate. All right. Uh, we want you to know that um, you should feel special uh, because you are special. And we hope you have a wonderful day worshiping with us. Amen. Um, this month we are celebrating um, stewardship. And remember, if you are a guest or a member, you can scan on the barcode there. And if you scan, then we will have your information and you'll know about all the programs that are going on here at Margate. Um, like we said, we at Margate, we believe in growth. And this month, we are concentrating on stewardship. Next two weeks, our evangelistic series begins. Um, if you are on YouTube, you see that there is evangelistic series going on all over the world. In Jamaica, we have Shine O'Connor blowing the trumpet and kicking up a storm. If you haven't looked into that, checked into that. Um, over at Fort Lauderdale, they're having the seven... Um, voices the seven saints of Jesus and I was there last night we can listen tune into that as well um, but remember our series begins next two weeks all right and for those of you who are studying with your um, your friends and family members remember to take those names to us in fact give elder Edwards a call so we can start talking about their graduation um, sister Tajay St. John's family member passed um, this week, that's her grandfather, all right? And um, her grandfather is very dear to her because she grew up with her grandfather. And so we want to pray for Tajay at this very challenging time. We also have Sister Bar Weiss, uh, a member of this congregation. Well, she was, uh, but she passed um, two days ago. And so we already have funeral service, and that's going to be April 14 at 11 a.m., at the Port St. Lucie SDA Church, all right? Uh, remember our sick and shut in member and other family members who are going through trying times. Oh, we have the funeral service there. At, um, it is the 14th of April. Um, that's just when our evangelistic series begins. Um, and it's going to be 11 at the Port St. Lucie SDA Church.
Okay, today we want to recognize all the birthday celebrants. On the 20th, we had Richard Christie. The 28th, Monica Baldio. Amen. Woman in Zion. And, and the 20th also, Brother Rowan Chong and Gloria Watson. I think Sister Gloria Watson, well, I know she moved away. Um, the 29th, which was yesterday, we had Sister Lorna Berry. And also, today is Brother Dean Graham's birthday. Anyone here whose name was called? Uh, uh, Sister Bali, I think, is here. All right. So we, we want to celebrate with them now. You may have had a birthday this week. We want to recognize you as well. If you had a birthday this week, just raise your hand. Anyone else? But what we're going to do for all the birthday celebrants is sing for them their song. And of course, today they should have their cake because today is the last day we have prepared a birthday cake for you all. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear celebrants. Happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord So what we want to do now is, in good old Margate fashion, is to stand and move around and just let everybody feel welcome. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Amen. All right, here we go. Walk around, members. We are, we are Margate. Welcome you today, today, today. We are Margate. Welcome you today. We are Margate. Welcome you today, today, today. We are Margate. Have a blessed day. We are Margate. Welcome you today, today, today. We are Margate. Welcome you today. We are, we are, we are Margate. Welcome you today, today, today. We are Margate. Have a blessed day. day. Amen. So I am not sure if the children will collect at this time. Children will walk around and collect the building fund at this time. So if the children are around, We'll collect the building fund at this time.
So we'll still have a children's story for those who are, the rest of the children are here. So those who just collected, come on up front. It's time for children's story. So those who just collected, come back up front for your children's story. The rest of the kids are upstairs, but for those who remain, come back for your children's story. And I don't see anybody moving. All right, let's go with the children's story. God hears my prayers. I live in a loving Christian family in Taiwan. My father is a pastor, and my mother is a pastor's wife. I have two little brothers, and we live with my grandparents. I want to tell you how God answers my prayers. When I was in the first grade, the school organized a special sports day. This was my first school sports day, and I really wanted to participate in the running and jumping activities. But I go to a public school, and the sports day was on the Sabbath. I prayed to God. Dear God, I said, please do something to I can participate in school sports day. I told mother that I wanted to run and jump with the other children on sports day. Don't worry, mother said. God will find a way to make you happy. The next day, mother and grandmother took me on a picnic. We had so much fun eating outside, and I was so happy. Look, mother said. God has found a way to make you happy. I laughed with joy. Mother was right. God had found a way to make me happy. Then God answered my prayer. This year the school sports day was held on a Friday, and I was so happy that I could run and jump with the other children. God listened to my prayers and answered them. God answers many kinds of prayers. Every time I take a test at school, I close my eyes and pray before I start. I ask God for help. Dear God, I say, please help me with this test. Please help me to be calm and to focus. I pray because I want to make God happy by getting good grades. God listens to my prayers and I am able to glorify his name with good grades. My parents and I are so grateful to God. I was so sad when grandmother passed away. She did many nice things for me. My family is Rukai, an indigenous people group in Taiwan, and grandmother wove a traditional Rukai backpack for me. It looks beautiful on my back, especially when I dress up in traditional Rukai clothing. I like to help grandmother. She leaned on my arm for support as she prepared dinner in the kitchen. My brothers and I sang her favorite songs to her. She gave us big hugs to show us that she was pleased. When grandmother fell ill, I went to her bedroom first thing after school and asked whether she needed warm water to drink. I liked to bring her whatever she asked for. I sat next to her bed and prayed for her not to be in pain. I was so sad when grandmother died. I prayed to God for comfort and strength, and he answered me. I realized that I should not lose hope and that grandmother had just fallen asleep. I will meet her again when Jesus comes. I pray that God will always protect me and my family. And he will. He always answers my prayers. While Lisa loves God, many people who belong to her Rukai people group do not know about him. Part of this quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will help spread the gospel to the Rukai and other native people groups in Taiwan. Thank you for planning a generous offering. Sabbath boys and girls did you enjoy the story yeah wasn't that nice can someone tell me what the story was about who was paying attention Josiah what was the story about come in come come here so everybody can hear 
when Jesus answered the little girl's prayer. Okay. What else? What What else did we hear in the story? Were you guys paying attention? Cairo, what else is in the story? Come tell me in the mic. Come. Her grandma died mm -hmm. and she prayed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then she'll come back in heaven. Amen. Good job, Cairo. The boys were paying attention today. Even though her grandmother died, she prayed for not to lose hope. Amen. Good job. Good. I'm so proud of you guys. Okay, we're going to have two prayers. Okay, we're going to give these two, a boy and a girl, a chance to pray today. Okay? Let's, let's, hold close. let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Let's thank Close your eyes and clap your hands. Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Help these poor and help these the grandma and grandpa grow again from heaven and be good and respect others and go to church every morning, every day and learn about God and 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 we be good and never pray. Amen. Amen. We pray for Lord. God, we be worse. Help us to be good. Bless our family, our friends, and our church. To give us our war sin. Jesus' name, amen. All right, good job, everyone. Go back to your parents or grandparents in this case. <laughs> Please stand with us as we have our opening hymn number 294, Power in the Blood. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Would, would you be free from the burden of sin?
All right, ladies, join. There is power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood One more time. Today's scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 to 26. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. But the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. There is a quiet place 
far from the rapid pace where God can soothe our troubled minds. Lord, this morning we come accepting your invitation to enter into your rest. We have been tossed and battered by a world that is filled with sin. But now, God, when we enter into your rest, we find peace, we find hope, we find strength. And so, God, we come praising your high and holy name. For who is like our God, abounding in mercy and love? And so, God, we call upon you today knowing with confidence that you'll hear us. Father, even as the world uh, pause and reflect, some are reflecting with bun and cheese, chocolates and bunny rabbits. But God, what we reflect upon is Calvary, where burdens are lifted, where you died for our sins, you rest in the grave on the Sabbath. And very early Sunday morning, you rose. And you are alive even forevermore. And so we can proclaim hallelujah. We serve a risen Savior. And he's in the world today. Father, we present before you your young people. They're living in a world that is blown by every wind of doctrine. Father, we pray that you will steady them, plant them firmly in your word, that they will not be moved, that they will find their identity in you, not from the world, and that they will proclaim your goodness and your grace. May they be like Hananiah and Meshach and Azariah, May they stand true to their Hebrew roots and not to the Babylonian tendency. And so, God, we pray today that you will hold them fast. May they be your light bearers wherever they are, at school, at play, at home, wherever they are. May others see Christ in them. You have promised that none that have been placed in your hands, will you allow the enemy to snatch? And so we are counting on you to protect them today. Father, we pray for those who might be sick at this time, whether it is physical, spiritual, mental. We present them before you, remembering that you are indeed the balm in Gilead, that you are the great physician, the sympathizing Jesus. And so we place them into your hand for you to do for them, which only you can do. And that they, when they have received recovery, that they will proclaim your name. They will sing your praises. And that others will know that indeed God has done this. Father, we are preparing for special revival. And so each one of us within our own space must first come to the foot of the cross. Surrender our will and allow your Holy Spirit to transform us so that we can be effective when we minister and share to others. Share with others your goodness and your grace. Father, may we not see this as another event that the church holds. But may we recognize that the signs are foretelling that you are even nearer than ever before. And so may we share the good news that Jesus saves with those around us. May we live lives that will draw them to us. Not only with what we say, but what we do. Father, we pray that you'll be with the one who will minister um, during that special revival and that lives will be won for your kingdom. Father, we are here today to hear a word, a word from you. 
And we pray today as Elder Peer brings that word, O oh God, that it will find root in our lives, that it will call us to action, that it will not just be a good sermon, but it will cause us to reflect and have introspection and that we will come awake fervent, committed that we must finish this work so that the end will come. So Father, we ask that you'll be with him. We pray that you'll be with all worshipers here present in the sanctuary and those who are in cyberspace. Be near to them. Show up in their circumstances even now. Remind them that indeed you are God and you're God alone. We thank you for the technical team who continues to work behind the scenes and to stream and to bring uh, the messages across the globe. We pray for our musicians and our praise team and those who minister in the sanctuary. Father, do something wonderful for them today. May no one leave here the same way they came. May they have that encounter with you and may they be like the woman at the well. When they leave here, may they run and tell everyone to come see a man who have told them, told her everything about her. And so God, even as we wait, we do not wait in idleness. We do not wait in depression. We wait with joyous movements and action because we know that we are working even as you are working. And so, God, we thank you for everything that you continue to do in our lives. And we pray now, O oh Father, as you have promised, that you will seal us unto eternity. Is our prayer and our asking in Jesus' holy name. Amen. As the deacons get ready to come forward to receive the morning tithes and offering, will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me. But he say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse. For we for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. There are many ways that you can give. For those of us here in the sanctuary, the deacons are coming around with the offering plate. So you can put your thigh and offering, write it up. The loose offering today is for the local church budget. Other ways to give, for those online, you can uh, go to the Adventist Giving app and uh, return your offering and your thighs there. Or you can cash up. 
Hashtag Margate SDA Church. Or, so if you're passing by the, the church during the week, we have a drop box here that's attached to the door. You can put your that and offering there. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever. tithes into the storehouse and prove me now herewith said the Lord of hosts if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it shall we pray kind righteous eternal heavenly father we give you thanks for your love and your mercy thank you God for providing for us as we return a portion of what you have blessed us with I pray and ask you to bless it and let it go to the furtherance of your cause. Bless those who have to give. Bless those who didn't, dear God. I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Someone say that we serve a risen king. Someone say we serve a risen king. Serve a risen king. Hallelujah. So, you know, this time of the year, they celebrate Easter. For us, we know that he's alive and he's residing in heaven. So we ought to be thankful. We ought to be grateful that he is our risen king. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Death cannot hold you down. You are our risen king. Hallelujah, you have won the victory, hallelujah, you have won it all for me, someone said death. Death could not hold you down, yes, you are the risen king, and you sit at majesty, sit at in majesty, yes, you are the risen king. Hallelujah, you have won the victory. 
Up your voice and say now Hallelujah. You have won it all for you me. Have won it all for me. Death could not hold Death you could not now. Hold you now. Someone say, You are the risen king. You are the risen king. And you see that majesty. for the cross Lord thank you for the price you've paid for me you've paid for you bearing all my sin and shame in cross you came and you gave amazing grace thank you for 
the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail pierced hand. Thank you for the nail pierced hands. Wash me in your cleansing blood. Now all I know, your forgiveness, your forgiveness.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we'll have our sanctuary choir, after which we'll have our sermon by, by our first elder, Elder Peart. Sanctuary choir.
your children as we stand here willing Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's so good to hear the choir sing. Amen. I do believe a church is not complete without a choir. So here at Margate, we can give God thanks that we do have a choir. It's good to see Brother Oret, Brother Omri. Amen. Sitting on the front bench in church. Amen. I know your dad would be very proud of you. Uh, it is the custom of preacher to recognize your wives. And so I'd like to um, recognize my wife today, uh, the queen of the home. Uh, you know, she doesn't know to show off. She is a humble soul, a rock in my corner. I believe that her patients are 
the better for it, not just because of her experience, but because of her care. Um, so happy, you know, this morning I was driving her, she, she, she was looking at me and said, what are you looking at? Teeth in a look there, Elder Fenton. <laughs> so happy to have her beside me. Amen. Amen. Um, today, my daughter is also here, my youngest, Abigail. Um, she is considering colleges and she's considering UCF, Brother Horan. So, you probably could give her a talk on that matter. I ask you to pray for all my children. Um, Olivia is worshiping in Palm Beach, and my eldest, you know, Janela, is now married, and she is at Coral Springs with her husband. Today is communion service, and so I shall not be long, but I hope you will receive a lot in a little. Today we look back at the Last Supper, the cross, to see its present gifts and future blessings as we unearth the lessons of humility, love, and grace taught by Jesus. Let us pray. Father, give me victory over myself. And I pray, O oh Lord, that as I lift up Jesus, some soul will be closer drawn to thee. I pray to Christ's name. Amen. I should have mentioned that Elder Amos and Sister Amos is not here today because they're celebrating their anniversary. The Last Supper. When we think of the Last Supper, we think of the famous painting of Leonardo da Vinci. In fact, the most expensive painting ever sold was painted by the same brother. It's called the Salvador Mundi. The Salvador Mundi was sold for 450 million U.S. dollars in 2017. That, my friend, could have paid all of Donald Trump's debts. And that was only a portrait of Jesus. The Last Supper is Jesus and all his disciples. But you couldn't sell it because it's painted on a wall in a convent in Italy. But my friend, what is more meaningful and far more valuable than the painting itself is what the Lord established in the Last Supper. Do you see the master washing the disciples' feet? He washed their feet. Yes, he did. Every one of them. Do you see him washing doubtful Thomas, cursing, denying Peter, the betraying vampire Judas, high-minded James, and the whole lot. The other gospels made light of this moment. In fact, they missed it, but not John. You see, John had keen eyes for the beaten, the belittled, and the broken. He saw profundity and spiritual weight in little things. They're apparently insignificant. Notice how it begins in John chapter 13, verse 3. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. Don't miss it. John is saying that Jesus knew whom he was. The author and the finisher of our faith. The Adonai, the Lamb of God, the Alpha and the Omega. He was in the beginning with God and there was nothing made that was made that was made by him. Yes, he, Jesus, called Orion and Pleiades into their places. Because Paul says he's the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Stoop down, wash smelly feet of disciples. The work of a slave. Our Jesus is in the stooping business, you know. I'm glad why you would have missed me in the mud. Well, would have missed you too. He stooped down and made man. Stooped down by a woman caught in the act of adultery and wrote on the ground, I have your back. And lifted her up. The God of the universe stooped down and died an ignoble, horrendous, hideous death. Went to the guttermost to save to the uttermost. Hallelujah for the stooping God. What a sterling rebuke of our pride and entitlement 
mentality. A brash expression by the Almighty God. The abandonment of formalities to teach a needed lesson. In the kingdom of God, the master serves. And if I do, shouldn't you? No, said Peter, you shall never, never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. In other words, Peter is saying, I have too much respect for you, my master, to have you perform this lowly task. Jesus' response is profound. You are lost if I don't. By the way, in Hebrew, in Greek, in Latin, it means the very same thing. You are lost if I don't. The fear of loss was so overwhelming, Peter says, going to the other extreme, Father, Jesus, wash my head, my hands, and all over my body. John 13, 10 says, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean. No, notice what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, Peter, you have already given your life. You have already been justified. You are already baptized. You don't need to clean your whole body. But you see, as we go along we, uh, the road of life, our feet become dusty. And so we have this service to wash and to be clean. This is not a cleansing, a physical cleansing. This is a spiritual cleansing. And that is why the Seventh-day Adventist Church believes that all baptized Christians, regardless of denomination, is welcome to participate in our service. The cleansing, my friend, is important. We need to be clean. But the story continues, and we pick this up in the book of Luke chapter 22. The Bible says in verse 14, And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not eat any more until it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread, gave thanks, break it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup of the supper, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Why? Last supper. Didn't the Bible tell us in Luke chapter 24, after he was risen, that Jesus had fish? In fact, some folks say if Jesus had Ellen White, he wouldn't have had fish. Those who are misinformed. Because you see, my friend, Ellen White recognized that she can only be saved by the blood of Jesus. Furthermore, John says, and the angel said to me, write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. So there is another supper. So why last supper? In fact, the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man opens, I will come in and sup with him. You see, my friend, the Passover was a celebration of divine deliverance, and all Israel looked forward to the Passover celebration. You see, it began when God's people were in Egypt, in bondage. They were slaves. And Egypt symbolizes sin. That night of deliverance, the angel of God flew over the land and the firstborn in every house was dead if they were not covered by the blood. But what do I mean? They had to have killed a lamb. And place the blood upon the lintel of the doorpost. And my friend, it was a symbol. Yes, it was. But remember, if you did not observe that symbol, your child was really dead. Symbols, my friends, are important. Don't make light of them. 
And if God establishes this symbol of the Lord's Supper, then I want to be a part of it. And I will be obedient to him. Amen? You see, my friend, the lamb represented Jesus, and the blood is blood. For years they were keeping the Passover, but now Jesus, the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth, was present to fulfill his purpose. He came to die. He came so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He says, I have a fervent desire to have this last meal with you. You see, my friend, he's replacing the Passover with the communion service. At his death upon Calvary, that was the last Passover. Now he's establishing the new covenant. So yes, he had a meal after the resurrection, but in the new kingdom, in the new covenant. Are you hearing me, somebody? So this night was his last meal. The ceremony of the Passover then is a celebration of deliverance. It, it, it's a celebration of freedom from the bondage of sin. You see, my friend, it's not just a message of history, but a prescription for righteous living. When we partake of the Passover service, the last, the last or the Lord's Supper, we're saying, I am no longer a slave to sin. No longer afraid that someone can play sin in my tea. You won't get this until you get home. You see... We have some folks who believe that someone can play sin in their tea, and if they drink it, they're lost. My Bible tells me in 1 John 3 verse 4 that sin is the transgression of the law. And, 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 and only if I have sin in my life, I am lost. Are you hearing me, somebody? My Bible tells me that only the blood of Jesus can wash away sin. By the way, in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, and Spanish, that means the very same thing. You see, I didn't go to those high schools, you see. But I've been to the foot of the cross. And I learned from my Bible that you can fake it, but only the blood of Jesus Wash away sin. It is by grace we are saved through faith. The blood of Jesus, not our works. But the Last Supper is also a ceremony of love and grace. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus knew he had to die to save us all. And he did it because he loved us. You know, Abdiel del Toro, the VP of Spanish Ministries of the Florida Conference says, the ideal church is a church that loves Jesus. A church that loves like Jesus and teaches its next generation to love like Jesus. Are you hearing me, somebody? You see, if, if we fulfill this purpose, there's nothing else we need to do. And I believe, oh, love, that will not let me go. You see, Paul describes this love like marital love. In Ephesians 5 verse 25, the Bible says, Husbands, love your wives. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. <laughs> You're thinking about getting married. You better think twice. You better think about it seriously. Do you love that woman like Jesus loved the church? And, and gave up his life for the church? Or are you going to complain that she can't cook? You know, I've been selling houses as a realtor for over 20 odd years. And I know that unless the woman say, I like the house, I don't have a sale. You see, the, the man sees a house as a status symbol. A woman walks in the house and she sees her, 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 her kitchen and she says, hmm, where am I going to put my stuff? The pantry is not big enough. Uh, she, 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 she goes into the house and she says, uh, the kitchen is too close 
to the bedroom. I'm going to be smelling my food while I'm cooking. She sees so many things that a man just can't. She says, oh, look at those um, grout in the tile. I mean, how am I going to clean all of that? And she says, uh, the man is happy that the house is so big. And she says, oh, there's a whole lot of house to clean. <laughs> when a woman doesn't know and believe in the love of a man, she cannot make a home. Oh, love that will not let me go. That's the love of God. When a man loves a woman, he, every little thing that pops up, he doesn't say, listen, I'm going to divorce you. M woman cannot build a home in a condition like that. So, 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 so Paul helps us to understand what the love of God is and the relationship of God to the church. He says, listen, it's like a man that loves a woman to death. Hello, somebody. So if she can't wash the white shirt until it's white, you don't complain. You go buy key foods and you buy some bomber. <laughs> Blue bomber. Are you hearing me, somebody? And you rub the collar. Are you hearing me, somebody? And, and, and you put it out in the sun on a piece of plastic and let the sun you teach her how to make it white because her problem is your problem and by the way if she is a dog you are a dog too Jesus is showing us what love is all about he says let's continue reading he says to make her holy. Husband, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy. Cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle, without blemish, but holy and blameless. It is the husband's responsibility to lead the wife and the family into righteousness. Just as it is Jesus' responsibility to wash us and make us clean. You see, my friend, the Lord's Supper is not just historical. It is present-day righteous principles good for living. But it also points us to the future. You see, my friend, there is a great supper ahead of us. And I plan to be there. You see, my friend, remember what Jesus says. Jesus says, first, you must be clean. Could it be that you're here today and you won't participate in that supper? When Jesus had made every provision for you to do so? My friend, be careful. Because every tub must sit on its own bottom. One of these days, Jesus will come. And he will take us to the great marriage supper. I don't know about you, but I plan to sit at that table. If you plan to sit at that table, let me see you raise your hands. If you plan to sit at that table, let me see you stand to your feet. Praise be to God. I said, my friend, I hope you will receive a lot in a little. Perhaps you have not yet given your life to Jesus. Not yet covered by the blood. Then I'd like to pray for you. Just raise your hands wherever you are. Not yet baptized. I'm going to pray a special prayer for you. Just raise your hands. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Praise God. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Not yet baptized. I'm going to pray a special prayer for you. Raise your hands and we will pray. Praise God. I see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hands. Father, thank you. For what you did in Calvary. You are worthy. Worthy to receive honor and praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for going to the guttermost to save us to the uttermost. And Father, by your grace, we will honor you. And as your church, your wife, we will respect you and respect your symbols. Father, we pray 
that you will bless now these proceedings. Through Christ's name we pray. Amen. You see that? As I said in the message, the Seventh-day Adventist Church observed an open communion service, which means that if you're a baptized member of any church, you believe in Jesus, you can participate in the service with us. The men will separate to my left in the room and the women will remain inside as we observe the foot washing service. All right, as we depart, we will sing a song. Thank you. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He hideth, he hideth my soul in the cleft of the a wonderful savior a wonderful savior is jesus my lord he taketh my burden away he taketh my burden away he holdeth me up he holdeth me up and i shall not be moved he gives me strength he giveth me strength as my day everybody sing he hideth my soul he hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock the shadows of dry thirsty All ladies who are taking part of the communion, please come nearer to us. Thank you.
Jesus saw me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. i 
so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His word, just to rest upon His promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove 
Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him all. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath a healing, cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus, simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust Thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that Thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. So we'll continue to sing number 516, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. All the way my Savior. 
Savior leads me, what have I to ask me side? Can I doubt His tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divine as comfort, here by faith in Him to dwell. with all things well for I know whatever befalls me Jesus do with all things well all the way all the way my Savior leads me shares each winding path I tread gives me grace for every trial from the rock before me though a spring of joy I see all the way my Savior leads me oh the fullness of his love perfect rest to me is promised in my fire there's house above when I wake to life immortal wing my fly to realms of day this my song through endless ages Jesus led me all the way this my song through endless ages Jesus led me all the way. Amen. We'll continue to sing number 520. We started singing that song earlier. He had in my soul. We'll jump to verses 3 and 4. 520, verse 3. With numberless blessings each moment. rapture I sing in my oh glory rapture. to God oh glory to God for such a redeemer as mine for such a redeemer as mine everybody sing he hideth my soul he hideth my soul in the cleft of the shadows a dry thirsty land he hideth my he hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand fourth clothed when clothed in his brightness transported I meet him in clouds of sky to meet him in clouds of the sky his perfect salvation his perfect salvation his wonderful love I'll shout with a million on high he hideth my soul in the cleft of the Thirsty land. 
welcome you to the Lord's service. We're happy that you could participate today. We trust that the blessings that you came in search of, you will receive. Number 412, look upon Jesus, sinless is he. Look upon Jesus, sinless is he. Father imputes his life unto me. than snow, fullness of his life, then shall I know, my life of scarlet, my sin and woe, cover with his life, wider than snow. has made red are the stains my soul is afraid oh to be covered Jesus with thee safe from the Lord that now judgeth me which I have received from the Lord, I now deliver it unto thee, that the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night he was betrayed, took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. 
Let us pray. Most kind and righteous Father in heaven, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we come once again to give you thanks and praise. As we come to partake of your broken body, help each and every one of us to understand the importance of doing so. Thank you for the way you have used your man's servant to help us to understand that this is not the time to run away, but is the time to come close to you. So if we have anyone even now contemplating and not taking this Holy Communion, help them to understand that by doing so, they can draw closer to you. So forgive us once again where we have fallen short. Help us all to be faithful. And as we partake, help us to do it worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. Remember, give me. fourth verse spirit and life are they words thou dost speak I hasten to obey but I am weak thou art my Back to first verse. Break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me.
being served if you were not served please indicate by raising your hand apart from the deacons deaconesses everyone has been served Thou art the bread of life, O Lord, to me, thy holy word, the truth that saveth me, give me to eat and On the congregation to sing spirit spirit and life for day words thou dost speak He took the cup, blessed it, 
He said, this is the new covenant of my blood. This do in remembrance of me until I come. Shall we bow our heads? Thank you, Lord, for this privilege of approaching your holy throne. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Lord, thank you for your spilt blood. Calvary that have made our salvation full and free. Father, we pray that you will bless this wine that represents your blood as we partake. We pray for an elevation, a transformation, and a change of life we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Number 318, Lord Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole. Give it a big of vibe. Number 
served, just indicate by raising your hand.
to the boat of them. It's only have one. Number. Number three, two, one. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, all the follies of sin I resign. Sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stain. I don't know about you, but I'm glad Jesus died for me. And I came here today to celebrate this gift that only Jesus can gift. And so we said, drink this cup and eat this bread. And as often as you do it, you proclaim my debt until I come. Eat it and drink all of it. We pray to Christ's name. Amen. You can retain the receptacles as souvenirs of your moment with God in the temple. And now we wash away your sins. At this time, we will have the prior for the offering. It is the custom to lift an offering for the needy poor after the veiling.
number 633, when we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that earth will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim's pathway, Clouds will overspread the sky. Just when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that earth will be. When we all Jesus will sing and shout the victory. Let us then, let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toys of life return. Rejoicing that the earth will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Let us pray. Father, you have said in your word, it is more blessed to give than to receive. You also said in your word that the poor will always be with us. I think it's a test for those who have to see how well they will deal with that which they have. You said also in your word, the way we treat others is the way we treat you. So Father, we pray that you'll accept this offering today. I pray to go to the cause that it is intended to. We pray and give thanks in Jesus' name. so glad that I am a part of the family of God. What do you say? Amen. And we are so happy that you could have joined us online and you may have missed participating with us here in the sanctuary. But I say to you, do not miss the great supper that God himself has prepared. And if you have not yet given your life to Jesus, remember, do so so that you will not miss out on that great supper over yonder. My friends, that is our service for today. I leave here rejoicing. What do you say? Because God has been good to me. Remember, next week our pastor is back. Let's continue to pray for him as he continues to mourn the loss of his brother. Have a wonderful Sabbath, everyone. What's left of it? Until we see you this afternoon. Amen. Just a quick reminder before we do our benediction song that the couples will be meeting at 8 p.m. at the Peart's home, as well as the March celebrants. We have our cake prepared for you, March celebrants, and those who want to participate, we have birthday cake prepared in the children's room. Thank you once again for joining us here, Mark. Mm -hmm. Have a blessed Sabbath. When we leave the sand. As we
upon thee may he cover you with this grace oh I'll keep praying for you oh please keep praying for me me yes may God keep us all in the palm of his hand Together again, together again, as we leave the sanctuary. Yeah.